<laughs> Namaste and welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua and for today's practice you will want to have any kinds of props such as two blocks, a strap, a blanket, and a bolster. The more kinds of props you have around that you can have accessible, the more options you may have, especially for the yin and restorative portion of our yin and yang practice. So please find any comfortable way to begin seated in which you can ground evenly through the bottom of your body, sit tall, allow the breath to flow easily, and relax. Today we are going to review the seven main chakras or seven main energy centers that are up and down the spine. So let's begin with the first at the root chakra, the base of the spine, the legs and feet, which draws on the element of the earth. So each is associated with one of the earth's elements. So the question might be, how grounded do you feel in this moment? And then moving up just a few inches above the base of the spine, below the belly button at the lower back, at your sacral energy center, drawing on the element of water. How able are you to adapt and flow with moment to moment circumstances right now? Fluidity. And then moving up to your solar plexus energy center, which is just below your rib cage at your upper belly and middle back drawing on the element of fire, such as your inner fire. How strong is your willpower to support what is sacred to you? And how able are you to digest and receive the nourishment of the moment's circumstances and situations? So your fire to transmute, digest, and move forward. At your chest, center of your chest and middle back is your heart energy center, where the element is air, let in a full breath. Notice how that feels and how easy or not easy it is to breathe in fully and then exhale completely. So in the element of air that we share, literally, how able are you to balance the act of giving and receiving connection, energy, love in order to perpetuate harmony or to promote harmony between you and yourself, you and your body, you and the life around you. Moving up to the throat chakra, here the element is ether the vastness, the emptiness, which holds and carries all that's moving through it, such as sound. And you might consider how expressive and how well are you listening for truth today? Communicating your own truth in your creative way and receiving others' truths through deep listening. Moving up to your third eye center, towards the center of your brain is your intuitive energy center. So how able are you to see life clearly beyond the narratives of the ego that often creates separating, separatist delusions, polarity thinking? How able are you, how able are you to see the bigger picture of what's going on right now? And the element is thought rising above to the crown of your head is your crown energy center. So this is the element of thought. I made a mistake here at your third eye center is the element of light because it has to do with clear seeing. And so your crown is the element of thought and your ability to tap into your inner knowing of our interbeing with each other, with all of the universe, all of life that exists, that we are all part of the same, our oneness, that unity consciousness. So our physical practice is going to look 
quite diverse, moving up and down the body, helping to encourage balanced energy flow, awakened energy flow, especially through the seven main chakras. So we're going to be chanting quite a bit in the beginning and in the end as we chant once the seed sound or bija mantra of each of the seven chakras. For now, let's start to check in with the other layers of our being. You might close your eyes and sit still as you observe your physical body. Noticing from one part of the body to another, what sensations are happening? What sensations are informing you of how your body is feeling? to help bring clarity and broaden our perception and perspective. Let go of having to judge what you observe. Simply observe as it is. Notice the flow of the breath. And all that you can feel in your breathing right now, such as the smoothness, the depth, the pace, What are you noticing about your overall state of energy? Meeting yourself exactly where you are there. Meaning if you're feeling a little lower on energy, start very gentle and very slow today. Maybe you take longer moments to pause and rest in the beginning. And even though we're moving towards yin, to move towards the center of that scale of high energy, low energy, how might you cultivate more energy as you move towards the latter end of the practice or vice versa? If you're feeling restless, maybe you need to get moving sooner so that you can really embrace stillness later. Notice how your mind is feeling. How are you feeling emotionally? And now let's breathe in a little deeper, opening the mouth to exhale any sound. Try a few more breaths, each next breath a little deeper, and a few more exhales through the mouth, vocalizing any sound that needs to move through to release stuck energy or tense energy. As you continue to deepen your breath, I invite you to call to mind something you feel appreciation for in this moment. And as I mentioned the qualities briefly of each of the seven main chakras, did one chakra or few particular ones resonate more with you today as something to focus on? invite you to set your intention or sankalpa for what you're cultivating through this practice. And as remember that we are all affecting each other near or far through the energy that we cultivate within ourselves, I invite you to choose somebody besides yourself that you would like to dedicate today's practice to sending someone else peace, loving kindness. And so bring your mind's eye to the base of your spine. We'll open the practice through seven seed sounds or bija mantras. Visualize at your root chakra the color red and repeat after me. Lam, deep breath in. Lam. Below the belly button at the lower back, lower belly. Imagine the color orange. Repeat after me. Vam, deep breath in. Vam. Uh, 
at your upper belly, mid back, solar plexus. Imagine the color orange, excuse me, yellow, like a bright, fiery sun. Repeat after me, Ram. Deep breath in. Ram. At your sternum and middle upper back. Imagine the color green for the heart chakra. The sound is yum. Deep breath in. Yum. At your throat, imagine the color blue. And the seed sound is hum. Inhale. Hum. At the center of your brain, your third eye center, imagine the color indigo. The seed sound is om. Deep breath. Ah. At the top of your head, crown chakra, imagine the color white and or violets. The seed sound is silence. Now let's start to regulate our energy through a specific breathing technique called Ujjayi Pranayama or victorious breathing which invites calm, focused, and balanced energy. So closing your lips, if you can, just breathe through your nose. And I'll count to five as we breathe in slowly, balancing it with an exhale of five counts slowly, while you gently constrict the back of your throat to hear a smooth and gentle whispering sound to your breath. Let's try a few cycles together, a few on your own, before you let go of counting. So empty this breath to prepare. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five. Exhale, five. Keep counting at least two or three more cycles. Listen to the sound of your breathing that you're intentionally creating. Let it be smooth, gentle transition between in and out breath. And steady. So now you're establishing a slow rhythm that will move our bodies to in vinyasa flow the first half of our practice so as you keep listening to that let's make our way onto hands and knees all fours and we'll start with an increasingly long version of cat cow starting with a basic one stack your shoulders over your wrists step your knees a couple inches behind the hips and with your inhalation glide your chest forward and slowly coil it up roll the shoulders back and down cow pose as you exhale, contract your abdomen, drop your head, and round your back, cat pose. Try a few more on your own, inhaling into cat, uh, excuse me, cow, coiling the chest up. Exhaling into cat, doming the back. So letting this flexion and extension of the spine bring some movement all throughout the seven main chakras as you stretch the front and the back of your torso inviting more spaciousness throughout the spine fluidity of energy flow throughout the spine and not and the main column that flows through the seven chakras It's called Sushumna Nadi, that main column of energy. 
Now on your next exhalation, sink your hips down to your heels into child's pose as you round the back, contract the belly. Inhale into cow again, coming forward, coil the chest up. And as you contract the belly to round, exhale into child's pose, sink the hips to your heels. Try a few more cycles. So as the distance becomes farther between the two end points of this movement, this entails the breath really lasting long enough to make it all the way forward and all the way back. Now on the next exhalation, after cow pose, tuck your toes and lift your hips high and back to downward facing dog, continuing this as a version of cat cow. So with the next inhale, knees down, coil the chest up to cow again. And with the exhalation, as you contract the abdomen, lift your hips, press your thighs back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Try a few more cycles on your own. Really feel how the belly's contraction is allowing you to more lightly lift your hips and draw them back to stretch the back of your spine. And the next time you arrive in downward facing dog, stay there for several breaths of exploring any kind of movement, especially to open up from your pelvis down to your feet, the region of your root chakra. You might paddle your feet in place. You might swivel your hips side to side. You might even stretch a leg up to the sky and stretch through the inner thighs. All the while still regulating a calm, deep breath and letting your neck relax, let the head hang freely. Feel the support of strong arms as the shoulders rise back. Making your way to the front of your mat, come into a standing forward fold, feet hips distance or wider, parallel your feet, and bend your knees as you reach the hands behind your lower back to clasp, bringing the focus to the upper body as well, especially in the region of the throat and the heart chakras. As you breathe in, roll the shoulders back, lift your heart forward and lengthen your neck. As you breathe out, bow in. Drop the head, softly shake your head no as you're stretching the arms forward further. Nod your head yes as you loosen the jaw, maybe flutter the lips, any sounds, helping to create that vocalization that massages in the area of the throat center. <laughs> ha. And then Press your fingertips either on your legs, two blocks, or the ground, and inhale as you stretch your spine forward, pulling in the belly, drawing the heart forward, gliding the shoulders back, half forward fold. Exhale again, forward fold, root down to your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms forward to rise to stand, sweeping the arms overhead, draw the shoulders back and lift the heart. Exhale, join your palms together at your heart center in Padasana, hands in prayer and mountain pose. And come back to your intention. You might mentally or out loud repeat it to yourself. Bring that energy into how we flow with the breath in sun salutations, offering gratitude to a beautiful source of energy for all of us here on this planet, the sun. So Surya Namaskar C, inhale, sweep your arms forward and roll your shoulders back. Exhale, fold over your legs, plant your fingertips on the earth. Inhale, step your left knee behind you, kneeling lunge, gaze up. As you hold your breath, step into plank, top of a push-up. Exhale, lower your knees, then your chest, then your chin, Ashtangasana. Inhale, slither forward and soften your shoulders behind you to Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale, firming in the belly, press up and lift the hips back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and fold. Press to your feet, inhale, rise, lifting your heart towards the sun. 
Exhale, joining your palms in prayer and reverence and gratitude. Side two. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the fingertips on the ground. Inhale, step your right knee back. Kneeling lunge, look up. Hold your breath as you step to plank. Then exhale, lower your knees, then chest, then chin. Inhale, slither forward, roll the shoulders back to cobra. Exhale, lift the hips, draw the belly in, press the thighs back. Inhale, step your right foot beside your right thumb. Lower your left knee, look up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and fold. Root down to your soles. Inhale, rise. Exhale, recenter your palms in prayer. From here, shift your weight onto your right foot. Try to keep your left and right hips balanced in height. And as you inhale, flex the left foot in front of you and bend the knee, raise the arms forward. Keep your spine upright and exhale, softly step the ball of your left foot back to a high lunge. Let's try twice more, moving to the breath. Inhale forward, lifting the left knee. Exhale back, high lunge. Inhale forward. Exhale back. From here, bring the arms overhead and feel that your feet are stable. Their hips width apart, parallel to each other, hips are squared. And then imagine without moving your legs that you're dragging your feet towards each other. Create a sense of stability that way as you bend the front knee right over the heel. With your right hand cupping the top of your right thigh, inhale, stretch your spine forward. Keep your hips leveled without turning the pelvis, turn your chest to the right, and lower your left hand either on a block or the floor on the inside of your front leg directly under your shoulders. Raise the right arm, and with your in-breath, press back through your inner left heel. Optional to lower the left knee if you need more support for balance. Stretch the spine forward, glide the shoulder blades, both down your back ribs, and as you exhale, hug your hips still, and continue to spin your right ribs towards the sky, maybe even looking up towards your right thumb, in which you could extend the right arm overhead. We've got another two breaths in this variation of twisting side angle pose. Parita Parshvakanasana. Now put all your weight on your feet, bring that scissoring action, and inhale, backstroke the right arm, raise the left arm and enter warrior two. Align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. As you open the arms, direct your gaze on the space just in front of your right fingertips so that you can actually turn your attention inward and listen to your breathing. Wrap your right outer hip underneath you as you bend the front knee right above the ankle. Firm the top of your left thigh bone back as you bring your pelvic bowl to sit upright, pressing the outside edge of your left foot deep into the earth. Now let the shoulders relax right above the hips and feel the spaciousness from the root chakra at the base of your spine all the way to the crown chakra at the top of your head. Last two deep breaths, Virabhadrasana two. Straighten your legs for triangle. You might shorten your stance a couple of inches. Equally press down through both feet as you glide your hips sideways towards your rear wall and lengthen your torso towards your front wall. Place your right hand either on your right leg, just not on your knee, or right to the right of your right shin on a block of the floor. Keep wrapping your right outer hip under you and tack the crease of your right hip back towards your left heel while you continue lengthening your crown towards the front wall. Add spinning your chest slightly to face the sky. Let your eyes land on one focal point where it feels okay on your neck. And let's listen to two more deep breaths in Trikonasana. Look down at your right foot and cartwheel your hands to frame it. Step back to plank. Inhale in plank pose. Exhale to Chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Take it to your vinyasa at your pace of breath. Inhaling to coil the chest up and exhaling back to downward dog. Pause for two deep breaths.
Once you've emptied the second walk or float to the front of your mat, forward fold. Press with your hands, inhale, half forward fold, lift the spine forward. Exhale, fold, press with your feet, inhale, rise all the way up, lifting your heart towards the sky. Exhale, join your palms in prayer at heart center. Step your feet apart, hips distance, and root down through your left foot, all four corners of it. Keep your two hips balanced and inhale, raise the right knee in front of you as you flex the foot, reach the arms forward. Keep your spine vertically upright and exhale, softly step the ball of your right foot all the way back to a crescent lunge. Inhale again, raise the knee forward. Exhale back, crescent lunge. One more time. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Now as you arrive in crescent lunge, bring your arms overhead. Feel that your feet are stably positioned. Hips width apart, parallel. You could even bend the back knee to help keep your pelvis sitting upright as you square your hips to face forward. Bring the energy as if you're dragging your feet towards each other while you bend the left knee right above the ankle. Create a stability below. With your left hand cupping the top of your left thigh, inhale, stretch your spine forward. Keep the pelvis still and exhale, twist to your left. Lower the right hand on a block or the floor on the inside of your front leg, directly under both shoulders stacked as you raise the left arm up. As you breathe in, press the right heel back and stretch your spine forward. Option to lower the back knee if you need more support. As you breathe out, firm your hips towards your midline. Keep the pelvis still while you continue rotating your rib cage, maybe extending left arm overhead. Tune into the last two breaths here in twisting side angle pose, Parita Parjvokanasana. Put all your weight on your feet. Inhale, backstroke the left arm, raise the right arm, and open up to your right in Warrior Two. Align your left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot and let your eyes land gently on the space just in front of your left fingertips. Listen to the flow of energy through breath. As you bend your left knee right above the heel, firm the outside edge of your right foot into the earth. As you wrap your left outer hip beneath you, press the top of your right thigh bone back. Which shoulders relax right above the hips, invite spaciousness from the root to the crown. Straighten your legs and maybe shorten your stance a couple inches for triangle pose. Glide your hips sideways towards your rear wall as you lengthen your torso towards the front. Lower your left hand just the height where you can continue to lengthen the left side of your torso and not compress it. Spiral your chest slightly to face the sky, finding one point to steady your gaze, your drishti on, as you smoothen out three more cycles of breath, trikonasana. On an exhale, windmill your hands to the floor and take it through your version of vinyasa or cat cows or child's pose. Maybe you go directly to downward facing duck. Listening to your body in this moment, what's it saying? How is it responding to the way you're practicing yoga asana? Bring your knees to the ground and let your feet come together to touch. Now let the center of your forehead, the region at the front of your third eye center make contact with something, whether it's the ground or a block. And as you actively stretch your arms forward so your elbows are not resting on the floor, lengthen the sides of the torso, lengthen up and down the spine, press your sitting bones back and down towards your heels, press your shoulder blades down your back away from your neck, and allow the crown of your head to lengthen forward. Imagine breathing into the bottom of your spine and lifting the breath up through each vertebra passing through the seven main chakras up to the crown and exhaling from the crown all the way back down through the root, out to the soles of your feet. 
a cleansing, renewing, rebalancing breath. We're now transitioning to the yin portion of our practice. As we bring a little more attention to our sacral and solar plexus areas, continue to stretch the arms forward. If you have something on your, under your head, you might want to remove it. As we walk the hands over to the right for a side stretch. You might be able to step your hands both outside of your mat as you keep your heart and head close to the ground. You might even play with stepping your left hand on top of the right hand and focusing on breathing into the left side of your torso from the outer armpit through the left ribs down to the left side of the hip. Couple more breaths on this side. And begin to walk your hands through your mat over to the left side as far as you can reach while staying low to the ground. You might step both hands outside of the mat. You might step the right hand on top of the left hand. Maybe imagine breathing deeper into the right side of your torso. from the outer right armpit to the right ribs, to the right side of the lower back and outer hip. Inviting more space there as you breathe in and releasing any unnecessary tension there or heaviness there as you breathe out. Come back to your center and rock forward gently to tabletop where your shoulders are right above your wrists and your knees are a couple of inches behind your hips. Let's prepare for a spinal twist that also helps to open up across the middle and upper back. And that is thread the needle. You might set up with two knees on the floor or you might add stretching the inner thigh by stepping your right foot out to the right so it's flat on the ground in line with your left knee. And if you decide that feels too cumbersome when you're in the twist, you can just replace the right knee on the ground again. So press the ground away with your left palm and raise your right arm as you breathe in. Open your chest. As you breathe out, slide the right arm under the left bent elbow and lower the right side of your head all the way down. Now to lessen the twist, if you don't need to go so deep, or if your head is not resting comfortably on the floor, use any amount of props to rest your head on. The more props, the less deep the twist. So let the sensations in your body, including discomforts and pain, really guide you to how deep you need to go in a posture. Not looking for pain. Some discomfort is okay. It might Reveal that the body is beginning to let go of resistance, but really use your discernment. And breathe deeply, helping your body and mind relax deeper into the posture rather than forcing it into the posture. Gently begin to rise back to tabletop. 
set up slowly for the second side similarly if you can so if you step the right foot out this time you might step the left foot out root down to your right palm inhale raise your left arm and open your chest exhale thread your left arm under your right bent elbow and lower the left side of your head use a prop under your head if that makes this posture more appropriate for you come back to full calm breaths One more deep breath here. And gently come back to all fours. Now bringing more focus into the region of the chest, shoulders, and neck. Grab your two blocks and place them on their second level or medium height. And wide across the mat so they're touching each other. Now if your blocks are very thin, this is a more standard size block, so if yours are thinner than this, it might be unstable to place them on this side in which you can place them on the lowest height instead. So experiment what works better for you and step your knees about a foot behind the blocks. Extend your arms forward, palms face down, and from the shoulders, rotate your triceps or outer upper arms down to spread the shoulder blades wider across your back ribs. At the same time, press the shoulder blades down onto your back ribs away from the neck. So you use those two actions, triceps rotating down, shoulder blades down the back to create spaciousness across the tops of the shoulders and along the sides of your neck. While you place your bent elbows on the blocks, exactly your shoulders distance apart, press your fingertips into each other, the opposite hands, and step the knees back until they're about two inches behind your hips. Engage the belly slightly so as not to dump into the lower back while you trace your thumbs down the back of your skull. Maybe as far as down the back of your neck and down between the shoulder blades, as far as you can trace the thumbs, letting your head fall towards the earth so that your chest can broaden and your shoulders continue drawing them down the back. Front ribs, the belly, lift them towards the back body and send your sitting bones way behind you. Lengthen the sides of the torso. We're here for five to seven more deep breaths. Where are you feeling this posture the most? Could you imagine breathing more deeply there? And when you're ready to come up, engage your belly more strongly so that you can easily rise and come up off the blocks, set the blocks aside, and bring your legs in front of you to rise to sit. Hmm. So from here, I'm going to invite you to set up for supported fish pose using two blocks, which will bring more attention to opening up the lungs, the heart chakra region, the breath, releasing tension along the shoulders and the neck. So let's place the blocks either tallest height at the rearmost end of your mat, medium height, whether you choose wide across the width of the mat or tracing the lengthwise of the mat. You can lie back and try each one and see what works better for you to relax the shoulders down and lift your chest. Keep your pelvis on the floor and let's continue to focus in the hips as well. So bring the feet together like prayer position and let the knees drop open. If your knees are uncomfortably lifting away from the ground, grab your blanket and open it up so that it is about the length 
of your wingspan like this. And then keeping that length, roll up your blanket so it's a very long burrito, smooth and firm. As smooth and firm as you can get it. <laughs> and then you can place that long burrito, the center of it, on top of your inner ankles and feet. And then tuck the ends of it underneath your outer knees or thighs to support you so that you can more comfortably open up the thighs. Now keep the pelvis on the ground and aim to have the area that's right underneath your shoulder blades touch the closest edge of the closest block. So the shoulders can feel relaxed to drop down while your chest is lifted as you bring the back of your skull onto the furthest block. So your neck has a natural curve, it's spacious in the back and in the front. And then you can allow the shoulders to roll back and glide the shoulder blades down your back as you turn the palms to face up, down by your sides. Now from here, notice how this feels. If you want to see how a different configuration of the blocks feels, feel free to experiment. We're going to be here for about four minutes, so make sure that you're in a posture that promotes relaxation and ease and naturally deeper breaths. If your chest feels quite open already, you can tilt the block that's under your head one step lower or even two steps lower. You can play with that. And I'm now starting to watch the clock for the four minutes. And come back to watching your breath, regulating by listening to the sound of your breathing and maybe even counting again, like we did in the beginning, inhaling for five counts, exhaling for five counts. You could even exhale for seven counts, making the exhale a little bit longer than the inhale, which promotes more yin energy, more relaxation, more tuning inward.
Allow for one more slow exhalation right where you are. Then take your time removing the blocks from under your body so that you can be flat on the ground with your torso. And we're gonna come into your chosen version of shoulder stand to bring more attention to the upper chakras of the third eye center and the crown as we bring more blood flow and energy to that area by raising the legs. So supported shoulder stand is placing your feet on the floor, taking one or two blocks and sliding that under your sacrum, the flat part of your lower back, so that it's stably supporting your weight to be able to lift your legs straight up. Classical shoulder stand, only practice it if you normally do and are free of neck issues. You place the elbows really close to your side ribs, plug them into the floor, place your hands on your glutes, and help to slowly lift your pelvis directly above your shoulders, straightening the legs up as you tilt the chin back, keeping your head still, not moving the, it side to side. You wanna make sure that you're trying to create a vertical line that stacks your ankles above your hips above your shoulders as much as possible. From here, you could come into plow where you bring the legs overhead and you could extend the arms on the ground like you would for bridge pose, maybe clasping the hands. So whatever inversion you're practicing, give another five or so deep breaths. If you are in classical shoulder stand or plow, bring your hands onto your lower back, plug your elbows into the ground for support, and very slowly lower your upper back, middle back, then pelvis to the ground. If you have a block under your body, go ahead and remove the block, and let's all meet with the legs straight on the ground, lying flat on the mat for fish pose the traditional version of fish pose. So slipping the palms face down underneath your glutes. And this posture is known to bring attention to the throat chakra, the third eye, the crown chakra, all of that. And we're gonna practice breath of fire only if you are not pregnant. If you are pregnant, just deep breaths instead um, for about 30 cycles of breath of fire while we're in fish pose. So I'm not getting into it just yet so I can talk to you. <laughs> if you are practicing breath of fire when we get into it, breath of fire is where you exhale actively pulsing the belly towards the spine and the mouth is closed. You're just breathing through the nose, short, quick, active exhalations like this. Find a rhythm you could keep and on your own, you'll count 30 exhalations. After 30, you'll take a deep breath in or I'll invite you to take a deep breath in on your own and hold the breath for as long as you comfortably can while you're in the pose. And while you're holding the breath, you'll lift your pelvic floor, create the root bandha, lock, draw the navel in and up, the navel bandha energy lock, and think of lifting the energy from the root chakra all the way up the nadi shan, the, the channel of energy all the way to the crown of your head. And when you can't hold the breath anymore, you're ex you'll exhale and then relax your whole body towards Shavasana. Okay, so here we go. Palms face down under the glutes, press the palms, elbows into the floor, legs are straight, feet are together. You can point the toes forward if you like. Tilt your chin back as far as you comfortably can. You might be able to bring the crown of your head to the floor. If you're pregnant, deep breaths here, or if you just prefer deep breaths. Otherwise, 30 exhalations, a breath of fire, you count on your own. After 30, deep breath in and hold the breath for as long as you comfortably can while holding the breath. Lift the pelvic floor, draw the navel in and up. Think of lifting 
energy from root chakra to crown. And when you can't hold the breath comfortably anymore, exhale through the mouth and relax your entire body. Release the arms, release the legs. Find your final resting pose to be still in for a few minutes of Shavasana.
Notice how your physical body is feeling now. As you keep your eyes closed, take the time to listen to how your body wants to begin moving. And start with small movements, gently waking up your body. Easing into simple stretches. And gradually turning over onto your right side into a fetal position. Resting your head for a few moments as you lie on your right side. Observe your breathing. And through the way you're breathing now, notice your overall energy. Sensing the effects of your practice. As you're ready, take your time pressing your hands into the earth and lifting your body slowly into a comfortable seated position in which you can sit for five minutes in meditation. Meditation is one of the practices that can help us to balance energy flow in our crown and third eye center. And it's helpful for all of the seven chakras in general. So as you're sitting, let your body be comfortably still. You might rest your hands either palms stacked on the lap, thumb tips touching, or Gyan Mudra, thumb and index fingers touching. And let this be a practice of feeling the subtlety of your own loving presence.
to notice how your mind feels right now. Observe any emotions that you're feeling. And then I invite you to acknowledge someone or something you would like to offer gratitude to. Remembering those who have come before us and have enabled us access to this tradition of yoga, passed on through many teachers, generations and generations and generations. Gratitude to our bodies, supporting us on this life journey in the physical. And then revisit your intention, your sankalpa for this practice. Remember to whom you dedicated today's practice. Connecting with them, with your body, your own spiritual counsel, all that you would like to connect in loving energy with as we chant up the seven main chakras to close, starting with the roots, Lam, breathing in. Lam, sacral energy, Vam. Vam, solar plexus, Ram. Ram, heart, yam, yam, throat, ham, ham, third eye, om, om, crown, silence. Bowing in, honoring your inner teacher, the light within. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.